Scanning. Identity authorized. Welcome to the Secret Superhero Club Podcast Network. Welcome everybody to the Animation Station Podcast, episode 134. My name is Josh, and joining me today, I have a very special guest in the house. I have Aaron Fitzgerald. How you doing, Aaron? I'm great. Well, thanks so much for coming on. Um, I've I've been uh, you know watching a lot of your stuff on Unlocked. Ah, that's going well. Exactly. So I, I was like, you know what? Well, let's go ahead and let's try and get Aaron on because it was one of those days where I was just flipping through stuff and like I was just looking through Unlocked and I was like, eh, I'll just click on Aaron. Like, because basically I was trying to you know find people that I could jump on and crash streams i was trying to imitate my boy bryce oh yeah yeah so, yeah yeah like, Maybe there's somebody that i can jump on and i was like i was like oh let's see aaron and i'm like i totally know that voice so it was one of those that it was oh, really really cool. cool oh yay i'm glad you liked it thanks for tuning in <laughs> oh no problem um so aaron let's just go yeah. um first off for some of our fans that don't know... Wait a second. I'm already sweating as if this is going to be a Jeopardy question. And do I answer <laughs> in the form of a question? Hmm. You know what? Hmm. Yes. All questions oh, on this episode. Yeah. Okay. Answer oh. it in the form of a question. <laughs> okay. 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 Game on. Game on. <laughs> All right, Aaron. So, for our audience members that don't know um, or, or may not be familiar with some of your work, mm -hmm. tell us what you do mm -hmm. for a living. Again, in the form of a question. What so, is a voice so, actor? So ex perfect. So who is Aaron? <laughs> who is Aaron Fitzgerald? Wait, that you're not giving me an answer. You're giving me a question. I'm yeah. You it's have to a give question. me. Oh, it's a oh. oh, you're right. That's right. That's yeah, not how Jeopardy right? works. Jeopardy. Oh, oh just shoot. say you. Just, you would just say Aaron Fitzgerald, and I would answer with the quit. Yeah, I think that's it. You say Aaron Fitzgerald, <laughs> and then I ask the question answer. I don't, I don't like the I don't like the Jeopardy. It's too complicated. I'm it not, is I'm complicated. Yeah, I don't want to deal with it. Who yeah. are the people who have to write that show? That's what I want to know. <laughs> like, I, that's a hard show to write for. It's one of those, I, I'm sure it's just like uh, one of those like uh, little calendars, like those question a day calendars that they're just like, uh, might as well just throw it in there. They just like get a bunch of them and like throw them on the board. It's, it's really just like one guy nowadays. He's just like throwing crap Whoa. up. It's like, uh, there we go. Very possibly. It sounds, I know Kari Waldron was an answer. Yes, it's, it's where, like, there's been a lot of, you know, uh, cool voice actors that have been answers on the show, and I'm just like, I thought that was huh, cool. That's weird. It's so crazy. Um, All right, ask the question again, and then uh, I'll give you an answer, answer. So, um, so Aaron, you are a voice yes, actor. So, I am. What? It, wow, that's. <laughs> We're winning! We're starting off fantastic. Yeah, so far so good. <laughs> two for two. Um, all right, Aaron. So you're a voice actor, but what is what is Aaron in her downtime? Oh my god, sleep. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, what my what I do for a living is so high energy, high. I mean, you're the same way. Uh, any Everything I do is high energy, high adrenaline, high life or death. And then when I'm not doing that, I am generally silent and sleeping. <laughs> That's pretty much on and off. My mom says I only have two switches on or off. I'm, I'm right there with you. If I'm podcasting, I'm on. And then if I'm doing unlocked stuff, I'm on. Otherwise, mm -hmm. I'm just going to like sit and I'll be like, maybe I should read, you know, it's just like exactly. something that requires no, no voice at all. Exactly. I have a silent dog. I have a silent house. I like listening to music. I like playing video games, but that's usually high energy. And it's like, that's when I'm the, the, the switch is on because I'm usually yelling and screaming and salty. Mm -hmm. And, and then if I'm not playing video games, I switch it off. <laughs> <laughs> and I just sit quietly and listen to music and stare out the window at the pretty, pretty green thing. Um, so, Aaron, I'm going to um, we're going to go back in time. So back in time. Okay, okay. What, did, <laughs> what did young Aaron want to be when she was growing up? Oh, I was already an actor. Already, and I knew so I was. Did, gonna, did you know that you were like, I, I, I want to be actor? When I was three years old, I was already acting out entire movies that I saw on television to the ninety-year-old lady next door named Mrs. Proudfoot. There was no question in my mind that I was wasn't already an actor. There was no question 
it was, I didn't think I would ever get paid for it, but I knew who I was and what I was here to do. I knew at three, I was an actor, a performer at that all throughout my youth. I was also a dancer. I also did competitive diving. I was very fit, very athletic. Um, so I was, uh, a, a, I was a performer regardless. I was always a performer. Um, it floored me when it turned out that I would be able to get paid for it. That was kind of awesome, but I didn't expect it at all. So, so you wanted to be an actor. Like, what did you, uh, what did you mainly want to do? Did you want to do like TV? Was it movies? Did you just want to do the whole game? Dude, dude, dude. When I was a kid, there was no such thing as separating it. If you were an actor, you do everything. You, did everything. you act. Whatever they would hire you to do, you do because you want to get paid and pay your rent. And if you want to be an actor and survive being an actor, you do theater when you can do theater and they hire you and they pay you. You do TV if they say TV. You do a beer commercial if they want to pay you to do a beer commercial. You do a uh, voiceover commercial if you want. You do uh, background voices for TV and film if that's what they want. You, you do uh, 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 historical interpretation because it's a there's a museum-y place and they want you to dress up and be Emily Carr. And so you do that. You do work at Universal Studios as characters because that's all actors. Acting and then you do, do you do that? You just you're if you're an actor, you will do whatever it is that allows you to act. It doesn't matter what it is. I think that it, it's the height of spoildom that people <laughs> decide I'm going to be an actor, but only for television. I'm like, who are you that you get to pick? Like, who gets to just pick one? If you, I mean, to survive. You've got to be able to do everything. I, I mean, that's the artistry, right? I mean, you might be a painter and you want to you want to be able to make money doing your art, but maybe you want to, you know, do your original art. But on the side, maybe you're a graphic designer to make to help pay the rent. You know, you do what you need to do. That's still within your wheelhouse. That's within the craft that helps make you better and and you get paid for it so you can live. That is that's a fantastic answer. That's a fantastic answer. Oh, thank you. Um, so you you wanted to be a an actor. Actor. Girl. I already was an actor, honey. There was never I'm going to be. <laughs> All right. It was so always, you were already like, an let me put it this way. Up. Let me put let me put it this way. When I was in high school, I of course was in the drama classes and my goal every year was to get the drama award. Why? Because I knew I wanted to be a professional actor and that somehow that award would be important. <laughs> and I remember one year, I think it was my last year at this one high school in Ottawa. Um, the somehow this little smart m m mathematician girl had taken a drama class and somehow beaten my dr drama score uh, on paper. She was a terrible actress, terrible <laughs> actress. And the, and the drama teacher, Mr. Kennedy, gave her the drama award that year. I lost my stuff. I, Mr. Kennedy, I literally went up to him. You know I'm going to be a professional actress. I need that award as part of my credentials. How dare you give it to someone who doesn't even care? She doesn't even care about the craft. Like, dude, that was me at 16. So I think that everything kind of makes sense after that. Oh my goodness! <laughs> it was and that, real, and it was that real. and and that young mathematician was. But you know what? Were so nice. No, but you know what? I did need that drama award when I applied for my green card in America, and I had to. Uh, I mean, I applied for my O one visa, which is to prove um, uh, you're a. You have to prove that you're of extraordinary ability. Mm -hmm. um, all of those awards, I ha I pulled them all out, and I had to use them for my package for Homeland Security. And at that moment, I was like, "Damn you, Mr. Kennedy! I knew I needed it." That would, yeah. the, you know, the, there was some border agent who was just like sitting there and be like. You know, if, if only you had, had one, one more. more award. But I did win the dance award that year, so I was like, oh, all right, fine, I'll take it. Be but like, there's the mm. diva, right? Like the teenage diva of like, I, I needed to be the best at everything because I know how hard this, I knew this was going to be a brutal career no matter what. So you knew you, uh, so you were an actor growing up yeah who correct. were some of the people that you emulated like what were some of your role models in acting oh my god anybody who was a comedic actor so billy crystal robin williams Whoopi goldberg those trio was just mm -hmm. kind of like the most powerful carol burnett bernadette peters um 
uh, oh, all the all the brilliant uh, Jonathan Winters, um, the character actors, the ones that were super unique, like uh, Bill Murray, all the SCTV, Catherine O'Hara, um, anybody from SCTV, anybody from sketch comedy, Monty Python, uh, Peter Sellers, people who could judge Meryl Streep, anybody who had the capacity to transform their being that I didn't recognize them anymore from character to character. That was always my favorite, whether they were a tiny role or a huge role, I didn't care. I, I just wanted to see them excel at um, being uh, multiple characters that always thrill. Instead of focusing on the type of acting, whether it's on camera, behind the mic, on stage, mm -hmm. um, I knew I wasn't, I, I didn't want to be a leading lady actress because they, even though they had the bigger parts, they had the more boring parts because it was usually a man who wrote the leading female role and usually the leading female role was very vanilla and to support some sort of male character and to be super cute or a love interest. And that did not interest me in the least. I would rather be a hooker or a drug addict any day because at least I was a character who had some sort of a story <laughs> to tell and who had been through a journey. Um, but And I ended up playing a lot of those in my 20s, the hookers and drug addicts, because they were the only ones that my agent would send me out for because I was too character -y otherwise. So, yeah, I, I, I mean, as a character actor, I fit better on stage and behind a microphone. Um, I'm a, I am broad when I'm on camera. I have done on camera stuff. I don't enjoy on camera stuff. I mean, that's a whole skill set that doesn't come naturally mm -hmm. to me. And I have to, it's almost like I have to take a fader and turn it all the way down in order to be on camera. Um, I have done it. And again, when they're willing to pay me for it and they want me to do the job, I will do it. <laughs> I'm never going to say no to work. Oh no! And yeah, it just turns out that I, I book a lot more work in the areas uh, of, of character acting, which is why um, now I became a, a coach for, for, creating characters uh, for specifically for video games and cartoons. Cause mm -hmm. that's been the bulk of my work for 20 years, but um, any of the characters I've ever played, you take it out from behind a microphone. It's still a character. I could put those characters yeah. on stage. No question. And we'll talk about your coaching here in just a minute, but I want to talk about that transition from going from uh, like the, the live action element esque to doing more of the voiceover work. So when did that start really, you know, turning around for you? Where, because I mean, yeah, your your agent was, you know, giving you, uh, you know, like the hookers and the drug dealers and everything like that. And then, mm -hmm. but then you, you like, when did it start to take shape that you wanted to do more in the voiceover? And this is where I didn't. your calling really I didn't. Was. I didn't know it existed. I don't, I, there was no such thing as that crap when I was coming up. I was like, okay, I, I, being an actor, I knew I'd be on camera and on stage. That's all I knew. Mm -hmm. I'd never heard of, I mean, I, I knew of radio, I was, I was in a radio play group. I was doing that. Um, but I, I had never heard of voiceover as anything. So um, I think what happened was one of my roommates, because I lived in a house of seven people, and one of my roommates got a gig doing a looping for a television and film, and they needed girls who could do accents and characters, and he lived with me, so he knew. <laughs> and he was like, why don't you come in? So I went in, and I'm like, holy crap. I, this, it was just like improv, right? It was, it's just a whole bunch of improv. And, I, and it was great because I was with a ton of other brilliantly talented uh, character actors. And one of the character actors in that session, his name is Michael Dobson. He turned to me and said, why aren't you doing cartoons? Because video games didn't have voices then. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I'm like, what do you mean? Why am, I, why am I not doing cartoons? And he literally had to, I was standing there in front of him. He's like, you know, why, you know, you'd be cartoon characters. I'm like, what do you mean be cartoon characters? And he's like, you know, like the, the actor who plays Papa Smurf, the actor who plays He-Man. And, and, and I, he, it was like he had just told me Santa Claus doesn't exist. I, I'm like, what? Papa Smurf is a Papa Smurf? <laughs> who are you? And I, I had like a five minutes of like realizing that Scooby-Doo wasn't Scooby-Doo. I went through all the cartoons of my childhood and I was a cartoon addict growing up. That's all I watched. I would watch anything animated before anything live action. So it was animated, animated, clay, I mean, Claymation was my all time favorite, then animated, then like uber, super duper, um, 
clean educational animation and then um and then any puppetry and then after puppetry it would be like some educational but at least they're in really stupid costumes yeah and then and only then after that would i watch live action i was not a live action fan (laughs) never was so it was really um a mind blower for me when he said that but it was like that was I remember the moment so clearly because that was the moment my entire life made sense. Um, everything I had done up to that moment since I was three years old, everything I had ever written, performed, uh, all, every single character I had created, the, um, the thousands of characters that I pelted at my friends on a constant basis, I, they had a purpose all of a sudden. Like before it was just annoying. Now I realized <laughs> that it wasn't... Um, I wasn't being annoying. I was preparing. I didn't know I was preparing. And then um, it was a matter of six months, this crazy six month period where I got a, a, in the dream state. Uh, I was given, um, I might've been in contemplation, but I think it, yeah, I'm not sure if it was contemplation or a dream state, but I, I, it, my entire demo came to me. And so I wrote it all down. I'd never listened to a demo before. I didn't know what a voice demo was, but I was told in this, contemplative state what to do for a voice demo so I grabbed uh Brian Dobson Michael Dobson's younger brother and I said we got to produce this demo for me and so and there was no I mean there was no technology this we're talking the 90s (laughs) it was a tape recorder it was like it was so stupid um and I put together I think we went to some professional studio and we paid a guy and it was a really and, and there was a dat and there was all sorts of fanciness and we coupled together this strange demo that I had been given in the dream state exactly the way I had been given it. Like it was, we created it exactly the way I was told to do it in the dream state. And um, I found an agent with it. And, and then the very first audition I had, it was the first year Cartoon Network had been invented. Nobody had heard of it. Mm-hmm. There was no such thing. We were like, oh, what? A channel playing cartoons 24 hours a day? That's crazy. And I got my first audition for the one of the first shows on it and that audition lasted for six months it was a six month callback process he fired uh like three different casting directors um i honestly didn't think i would ever book it but i booked it and it was my very first cartoon job and that cartoon job led to a bunch of other cartoon jobs and then i moved to america and had and cussed out mr kennedy for not giving me that damn damn <laughs> drama award but still got my own one visa and uh, I guess the rest is history. Then they started voicing video games. I, I got my work visa here on a job that was uh, video game voicing. I was like, oh, look at that. Video games have voices now. Isn't that handy? Thank you, video games. I think my very first video game in America was Spawn Armageddon. Thank you. Oh, Spawn. So mm-hmm. so what was so was Ed, Ed, and Eddie, was that your first with Cartoon Network? Oh, yeah. I didn't mention the name. Yes, Ed, Ed and Eddie. Correct. All right. Excellent. Yeah, because I, I was, I was when I was looking through your resume, I was like, all right, yeah, okay, Chie, yeah, big fan of Persona, got that, you know, keep scrolling down, and I was like, wait, like, May Kanker and Naz from Ed, Ed, and Ed, and he's like, mm-hmm. I grew up with those characters, what the yeah, heck's going did. on? And like, that like, Woo-woo. blew my mind. You're welcome. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> so, um... So let's kind of go um, video games and animation. So okay. I'm going to give you a choice. That's mostly what I work in, <laughs> so that's perfect. Uh, video games or animation, which do you – okay, this is probably going to be not a, not a good question. Well, which, which do you like in recording more? I like, I like cartoons more because I get to be with other actors. Okay. I, feel, I, I am an actor's actor being trained in the theater, coming up and writing my own stuff for every, I, I want to play with everybody. The whole point of being an actor is you, you can't act without reacting. Um, video games are so dependent on the voice director because you have nothing to react off of in a video game, unless it's one of those rare big budget mothers where you they bring other actors in for you to react off of but most of the time you don't get to so for me to be me as a person who likes to be true to my craft you surround me with a a bunch of incredibly talented geniuses and i am going to fly like um when i was on the series wild grinders that played on nickelodeon Mm -hmm. i was in the room with cam clark 
Yuri Lowenthal, Kel Mitchell, freaking Kel Mitchell. And we were just dying laughing and, and the brilliance and the improv and the comedy. It, it was just, it was insane. And then the same thing for, um, for this Ask the Storybot show I'm on yeah. with, uh, on Netflix. Uh, I mean, I'm in the room with Judy freaking Greer, AAA film star who is in the booth as the lead character, Fred Tattashore, Jim Meskimen, and we're playing off, and, and we're doing, you know, t- I, so many characters that we get to do other than our just our lead characters. It's just so fulfilling. It's so satisfying. It's very like a theater troupe. It's very, it feels like family. Nobody is more important than anybody else. It feels very ensemble. Um, including the engineers, the sound engineers, I mean, like the writers, the producers, the teams mm-hmm. of people. Like, it's such, um, I, like to, I like anything that makes me feel a part of the team. Um, video games, it's harder to feel that because you're really kind of like the cherry on the sundae. You've got, you know, thousands of programmers and coders who are like working in a completely separate building that you never get to meet. Yeah. If you're lucky, you get to, you get to interact with a writer um, uh, ideally they have a voice director. A lot of games seem to forget that they really need a voice director these days, um, and have, don't have somebody between the writer and the actor, which you really do need. And, um, and it's a lonely job. And, and so I depend on a voice director in a video game. Now that's a very intimate relationship. Anybody who's a video game director, they're your lifeline to a good performance. Um, if somebody's a bad director for a video game, you're screwed as an actor because you are, you're only as good as what they can give you to react off of. And you have no concept because you don't get the other person's lines in video games. Yeah, it's, you it's get your like, lines. Here's yours and go. Thousands and thousands and thousands of lines with no idea or context of who you're talking to, what mood you're in when you're talking to them, where you are, how loud you are, if you're in the middle of battle, or if you're having a conversation by the fire. All of that information is given to you by the voice director. And a great voice director can give you information without having to give you the entire plot and story, the way a writer will go, well, let me tell you the entire scenario. What, that's not what an actor needs. An actor just needs the basics to understand who I'm talking to, what is my intention with this person, and what am I trying to get from this person? Like, what is it that I want? What, what is it that's driving me in this scene? Um, and, and then just getting to completely become the character. And in a lot of video games, they're more realistic than cartoons. They're not as, they're not as wacky or silly. So I, I, don't, I don't use my, com- unless it's persona, I don't use my comedic skills as much. Um, it's, it's very much more dramatic and, and serious. So, I mean, it depends. It depends on the game. Yeah. I, I, of course, prefer the comedic ones. I definitely lean towards comedy more. That's my heart space but um i really like getting to do like talus principle it was a puzzle game i mean that role was one of my favorite roles just because i feel like i knocked the drama out of the park i was very proud of myself of where i went with that character and who i got to become and that was because the writer was so freaking brilliant like really good writing makes our job as actors so easy and I'm I'm gonna kind of echo what you said about having like a a good voice director because I, I went to L A uh, a couple months ago and I had the opportunity to go to Dubbing Brothers and I was watching uh, Ezra Weiss direct. He's one of my favorites. He is the nicest well, man in the world. Enjoy. I beyond love him nice so man, much. Though, but beyond being a nice man, he is a spec spectacular director he knows Uh, exactly what information to give the actor to get them emotionally to a place they need to be swiftly in a very very little amount of time and he he, and he also because he's got like that huge performer side of him he will find the other person's lines and deliver them to you so you have something to react of he Mm -hmm. will go out of his way and for whoever he's working for to give him all of the dialogue so that he can give the actor exactly what they need. Like not everybody does that. He's, he's definitely an exception to the rule. He's yeah, brilliant. Like, I, I was watching him. They were doing um, an original animation. So Bryce was in there. So I, I was watching these two people that I, I love just like basically acting. I mean, and you know, Ezra's doing his like, oh, well, you know, he'll basically do a brief explanation of the scene. And then he was reading mm-hmm. everything. And then Bryce was mm-hmm. going off of that. And I was just like sitting there watching the entire time. Just like, mm-hmm. this is awesome. Like, 
I, exactly. I was expecting to go in there and, you know, watch, you know, Bryce, like, match lip flaps and everything, but I got a treat, and I'm just sitting there, and I'm like, this that is one of the coolest things I've ever you don't seen. Do that. You, you record, it's, original animation is called prelay because you um, record the audio first, and then the animators mm -hmm. animate to what you recorded. So it's, it's a much more important job as a voice actor because whatever you come up with in your imagination to throw into the mix, if you do it brilliantly, and that's why the top people are who they are in terms of prelay animation, the top voice actors, mm -hmm. because what they deliver, the animators, they're, they're given gold. Like they can do it. Like when you watch a Tom Kenny, like they're animating to what Tom Kenny's performance yeah. is, which is why those characters are such standout characters. It, it, the little nuances that you would have never thought of that wouldn't have been there if Tom Kenny hadn't delivered it. You know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. So, so what have been some of your favorite recording sessions? That's going to, it's, it may be a hard one. That's, I don't even know what to say to that. I've had thousands. Like, where do you, I don't, I mean, I don't, I love, I love the ask the story about sessions. Those are the ones that, I can't, Whatever job I'm on, I'm usually in love with it. Like if I'm in, That's it's great. like being in the theater, right? Like it's, I can't, you go through processes where when you're on a cartoon, mm -hmm. you're in that cartoon, it becomes your theater, it becomes your family. And when the cartoon comes to an end, there's the mourning process. It's just like at the end of a theater run, it, you have to say goodbye to all those family members. You have to say goodbye to the characters that you fell in love with and that you've been for years. And, and it's a heartbreak. It's a terrible heartbreak at the end of every show. Um, at the end of Ed, Ed, and Eddie, I cried my eyes out. At the end of Monster mm -hmm. High, I cried my eyes out. At the end of Ever After High, I cried my eyes out. At the end of Wild Grinders, I cried my eyes out. So here's the thing. That heartbreak is like a breakup every single time. So, it's. I mean, there, there are amazing times through all of them. But currently, the one that I'm on that has yet to break my heart yet, because it's not <laughs> over yet, that's where I pour everything into. So um, I have a, a few other, like, I got to do um, one of my, one of my, one of my, oh God, back when I was on MySpace, there was an artist who was a fan. She was 16 at the time, and she reached out to me on MySpace, and she created the most amazing fan art for me. Mm -hmm. And I just fell in love with her artwork. Her artwork was stunning and brilliant, and we became friends, and we went to Comic-Con together when I did the Ed, Ed, and Eddie panel in 2007. And I, I went with, I stayed in, in a hotel with her, her mom, and her sister, and I took them to the panel so she could meet um, Danny and Tanucci oh, and awesome. all the cast. And, um, you know, here we are, I don't know, it's got to be 15 years later. And uh, she is a professional artist working for Disney. And yesterday, her and her uh, her man put out a trailer for uh, an animated pilot they're working on um, that I've been a part of the process of like supporting them and, mm -hmm. and cheering them on. And then they, they, they did put me in the pilot, but I'm not in the trailer, but I didn't have to be in it at all. I was perfectly happy, but to the, the, the cartoon is called long gone gulch, okay. um, huge Kickstarter campaign. Uh, the, the pilot, and I mean, the trailer for the pilot is out. It's just stunning. I'm so impressed, and I'm so proud um, to be to have participated at all. But to watch this young woman go from 16 to now, and just totally, you know, create her dream from scratch. Like she, she was the hardest working 16 year old I knew. I know that that hasn't changed for her, and she gets to work with the man she loves, doing what she loves. It's just, uh and then I get to be a part of it. Like I, that was a fleeting moment of time for me in terms of what I actually recorded and my involvement was like, you know, seconds long, but the way it feels in my heart, it feels epic and huge and mm -hmm. it feels celebratory and it feels, so I don't know how to answer that. <laughs> I don't know how to <laughs> answer that. I've had moments where I'm in the booth in my closet that like moments that blew my mind recording that I'm like, I can't believe this is happening. I can't believe this is happening. That's the job. That's the job. Um, I will say, I just looked up a uh, long gun Gulch. That is super stylized and I love it. Yeah, it is. That, amazing, is, that right? is really yeah. cool. Everybody follow it. When the pilot is done, it's going to be only balls. <laughs> 
Um, so let's kind of transition f- uh, into more of your coaching. So, okay. uh oh, <laughs> <laughs> what made you want to be? Because I I asked my uh, I didn't want vo- to be a coach. Vo- vo- coach. Never was planned on being a coach. Never was not on the table. People asked me for years if I would privately coach them. And I said, no. And, um, and then uh, I became friends, really good friends with uh, Stacey Aswad and Chuck Duran, who do the VO Buzz Weekly show. And I had done an episode of their show. If you're a voice actor or a budding voice actor, you should be watching their show. They, they, they are like the acting 101 of voice acting. Mm -hmm. Their shows are into the hundreds now. Um, they not just actors, but uh, directors, uh, casting, uh, the top coaches in the world, like just everybody that is anything in all areas of voiceover. They're, they're just, they are kind of like the authority in all things voiceover. So um, they had built um, a site uh, called opencoaches.com where they didn't, they just want it because they get, they get thousands and thousands and thousands of a voice actors coming to them, asking them to refer them to coaches. Mm-hmm. And um, it becomes really, really ho- difficult because, you know, because I, I understand it's, it's the internet age. So people type in voice coach and like all these people come up with really no experience that are charging all this money, who don't know what they're talking about, yeah. who give terrible advice. So they decided they wanted to handpick and um, create a safe space for real serious voice actors to go. So they created this opencoaches.com and they got all of their best um, voice coaches for promos, narration, trailers, cartoons, video games. And they approached me, they approached me and they, Stacy sat me down and was like, I know you have said that you don't want to do this, but we think you would be really good at it. Your computer savvy, it's all remote. You don't have to go anywhere. And so she talked me into it. She talked me into trying it when the site went into beta. And it turns out um, I don't consider myself a coach. I consider myself a workout partner. So I work out with an actor. Um, If somebody's brand, brand new, I absolutely, it's Mm -hmm. an acting 101 class. No question. And I impart all the, the 25, 30 years of training that I have received, I try to pass on to the person who is spending time with me, including vocal warm ups and all the important things for this as a long term career. Um, but anybody who's already, uh, you know, kind of like on their journey, yeah. my, my people who are like the professionals who come to me who are already voice actors, uh, they come to me to create characters. And we generally create three to five new original characters for an individual per session. So I'm like a workout buddy. Um, I'm really good at creating characters and I'm even better, uh, it turns out, at cre- helping others create characters that are perfect for them, that bring out, uh, that stretch them, that expand them, that think out of the box. Um, I don't focus on voices at all because I think if you focus on voice, you're already epic failed because there's no such thing as voice acting. That's a, that's an illusion. That's just a label. There's only acting. Mm-hmm. So if you are a character, the sound of that character is going to come out whatever way that character would sound. Like if you're being true to whoever that character is. So that's, that turns out now that I've been doing it a year, it turns out that um, people apparently like it and keep coming back. And I I am so shocked that I love it. I freaking awesome. love it. Every person that has come through, first of all, I feel like the site itself, not only am I vetted as a professional, but I feel like it vets the students. Like people don't sign up through open coaches unless they're serious. So I only get these really passionate, serious people who just want to, who want to create. And that just, that floors me. I love working with creatives. I just love I love the teamwork aspect of life and, and art and creating. I just love it so much. That's awesome. I mean, cause like I asked uh, my voice coach the same thing. Like what, like when did you want to become a coach? And he's like, I, I didn't, it just kind of happened one day. And so I was like, Oh, that's awesome. So that's kind of how we really got started. Um, mm-hmm. But I'm definitely going to be checking your stuff out. So. Well, check that whole site out. You would be shocked to see who was all up in there. Oh, that's awesome. Like, cause it's all working professionals. Nobody is a, is a coach by job. Everybody is a professional voice, working voice actor mm-hmm. in their field of expertise who do coaching 
additionally to either to give back on the side type of a thing. Um, but we're, yeah, none of us are retired and just coaching. <laughs> yeah. That's good. That's the best part. Cause yeah. I mean, it's like, so it's all up like, to date. It's like, yeah. I, I did voice acting for, you know, 10 years and then I retired and you're like, all right, well, why do I want to get with you? You're not in it anymore. Right. Like times right, change. Right. They do. But acting doesn't like, I mean, style of acting does, but the basics of acting, sometimes going to somebody who's really old and retired is brilliant because you'll get some acting chop technique stuff mm -hmm. that you'll never get from somebody who's 20 years old, who's never had that training. Yeah, that, that, that's a very good point. Like, I think it's good to train with everybody. I think it's important to keep training. I mean, I'm, I don't know, 30 years into a career that I'm still, I still go to different teachers and different levels of experience outside the, like I'm all, I love getting coached. I love getting feedback. I love not getting feedback. I love listening to, I just, I just love the, the whole craft itself. I just, it, you, it, the whole point of, of it being a craft is that you never achieve mastery. There's no such thing because you're, we're the only career where our instrument changes every year. Our instrument is our body. It's aging every year. It changes every year. So what you're able to do last year is going to be different from next year. And mm -hmm. things that you couldn't do before all of a sudden opens the door to all these things you can do now. Like, so you, if you don't figure out how to play your instrument properly for every year of existence, then you're missing out. If you think that you're just limiting yourself to the same stuff, if I limited myself to all the stuff that I did in my 20s, I wouldn't do half of the stuff I'm able to do now. Yeah, I hear you. Same, like if I, you know, was doing what I was doing, you know, heck, even like a year ago, it would be completely different. I mean, I'm not, I know myself, yeah. I'm not in the same frame of mind that I was a year ago. So yeah. even trying to think of what I'm doing now, I would have yeah. just given up last year. So, yeah, yeah exactly. I'm, I'm right there with you. Cool. <laughs> so, um, just a couple more questions all I've got left. Um, so you can go about the rest of your evening. Um, oh, thank you all. Is there anything that you haven't really... Okay, so this is going to be fun. Is there anything yeah. that you haven't worked with, uh, worked on that you would want to be a part of? So like Star Wars I'm, universe, Star, Star Wars, Wars universe, okay. Star Wars universe. I want to be in the Star Wars universe. I don't care how. I'll, I'll anyhow. I'll get I'll get my friends at Disney. Um, that 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 listen. I'll be like, hey. That's a bucket list thing. Air but here's the thing. I, I don't want it to be fleeting. I want it to be recurring or long term. I, I I can't just put a toe in and then have to be forced out. That would that would break my heart. I want to be. I, I'm I'm ready for the full time commitment to Star Wars. It is my lifeblood. So you don't want to be Stormtrooper number eight. You want to be no. I do it though. Let's be real. John. Oh yeah, I right. Take all I, jobs. I don't know who would want to be like. Yes, I will. But that's not the dream. If you want, if you're telling, ask me what my bucket list is. That is my. That is, I think, the only thing left on my bucket list because the show I'm currently on has already won three Emmys mm -hmm. um, and it's only really and it, that's three Emmys based on the first season and a Christmas special season two just came out in August we'll see if they win Emmys next year but like that that bucket list check <laughs> it's like being on a Muppet it's like being this show is for me is was the equivalent of uh, getting to be with Jim Henson at the beginning of Jim Henson. This mm -hmm. Jim Jab crew and what they're doing feels like I'm at the beginning of Sesame Street. So um, that is a bucket list check. But Star Wars, right. the elusive. And also all the crap that Blizzard gets lets me do. Like, oh my God, Blizzard has been so kind to me. And I get to play so many amazing Shakespearean type, brilliant characters and creatures uh, very satisfying. Um, so check all of that. But Star Wars, I want to be in. Star so do you Wars. do you want to be like a like a like a face type character, or do you want would you like to be like a droid? I, I'm, I I'm, gonna, I'm gonna I I'm gonna give to, you a free reign. I I'm gonna let don't you even pick. Have to talk. I could be a creature that just goes. <laughs> but it has to be a creature that's around for a long time. <laughs> you you uh, so like creature that's like like on main character's shoulder, like that type of. <laughs> Yes. That would be awesome. That would be great. Now I want to see that. Now our friends at Disney, <laughs> they got to make it happen now. This is my dream. <laughs> One day. 
Yeah. <laughs> All right, Aaron, is there any any shows, any uh, video game, anything right now that you want to plug? Oh, plug. Okay, so ask the story about make your little kids watch it. It's brilliant. And you'll learn something. Um, oh, I wrote an ebook called 10 Things Any Voice Actor Will Tell You If They Are Me. Uh, the ebook is good, but the audiobook is 15 hours of me having conversations with professionals in the industry talking about each chapter of the book, oh, that's which awesome. is brilliant. I, and it should be going on sale in December. I just got to talk to my web designer about making that happen because so that'll be happening. So, yes, yeah, promoted that. Uh, I am a Twitch streamer. Uh, just find me on Twitch, Aaron Fitzgerald. If you just want to hang out and be ridiculous, that is something I've been an affiliate for a year. I hit 20,000 views this week. Oh, nice. Um, I'm just, I, who knew that I would be doing this, but I'm really loving it. Um, through the Twitch, I have a whole discord community. So there's a, I'm building a huge community in that air, in the gaming area. That's been really great. I'm, I'm a big advocate for girl gamers. I'm addicted to watching Overwatch League. So there's a whole part of my universe there that uh, I'm plugging just because if you're one of those humans, come and hang out with you there. Obviously, the yeah. Unlocked. Um, uh, uh, there are video games I'm in that I can't talk about that you will eventually find out about, possibly. Perfect. Maybe not. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I think I could talk about, oh, yeah, the Defense of the Ancient Artifacts card game. I'm uh, Debbie the Cunning used to be Riley the Cunning, but now she's Debbie the Cunning. Um, and if you play that game, you know who I am. Uh, so I can talk about that now. I'm very excited about that. That was cool. And Ural from World of Warcraft got released in Heroes of the Storm this year. That was dope. Um, and that, I, I'm i sure there's more, but I can't. I don't know. It's really hard to keep track of. Yeah. Um, IMDB does a terrible job of keeping it up to date. Um, everybody, I, I really trust the fans. I figure you guys will know before I do. Please contact me <laughs> if you find out I'm in something so that I can post it on my Twitter at Aaron Fitzgerald, my Instagram at Aaron Fitzbadass. My website is AaronFitzbadass.com. That's where you can see all of my credits and demos and all of that stuff. Um, I think that's everything. I mean, we, you covered everything, Josh. I try. What is try. complete? this interview excellent well <laughs> hey, you, you got my next question it was going to be where can everybody find you but you already plugged nailed it, all, it. so you you're welcome you already got it and we're going to put everything in the show notes so if you want to check that out go to the show notes you can click on everything oh shoot i forgot we had a sponsor this episode oh well uh josh Who's the sponsor let's talk about that uh, our sponsor this week is funimation so our good friends over funimation? at funimation are actually... I love Funimation. <laughs> right? I'm in Danganronpa with Funimation, and they did a noir anime that they directed me in. Uh, I mean, a hyperdimension anime. I, Funimation, I love you. <laughs> well, plug. as you could hear, uh, Aaron has been in multiple Funimation things. And if you want to watch the Funimation titles that Aaron is in, our friends are giving us giving us giving you we already have it they don't got to give us nothing they're giving you two free weeks of anime all you have to do is go Whoa. into the description um of this episode click on the link it'll take you to the site you'll get your two free weeks of anime two free weeks <laughs> then after that it's only 5.99 a month which is ridiculously cheap especially That's if we're talking nothing. yeah exactly if, if we're talking Unlimited streaming anime Exactly, and you get your Dang. like you get your dubbed anime, so you get to listen to Aaron and all of our wonderful voice actor friends, and they've got your subbed anime if you want to read everything. They got both Yay of it. For both reading. of it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Again, just go to the uh, go to the link in our description. Click on that, and it's the same link that's on our Instagram. Just click on that; it'll take you to the site. Get everything perfect. Funimation and the ASP. Funimation! You should be watching. And listening. I will. <laughs> oh, thanks, Aaron. Um, and you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Josh L. Kane. You can find the podcast on Instagram at Animation Station Podcast. On Twitter at Animate Podcast. On Facebook and Tumblr, Animation Station Podcast. All of our episodes are available on iTunes, Stitcher, Podbean, Google Play. Anywhere that you can download an episode. Coming soon wow. to Alexa. It's coming we're working on making everything look all nice and pretty. Um, and you can also go to our website, animationstationpodcast.com. All of our episodes are there. We'll have all of our stuff. Uh, we all have our weekly unlock stream. That is every Wednesday night, 9 p.m. Central Time, 7 p.m. Pacific. We're always on there. We're doing all kinds of stuff. we got a lot of cool stuff coming up with Unlocked. Um, 
We're working on a whole bunch of fun things. Uh, Bryce and I had a good 45-minute phone call the other day, so we've been sketching all kinds of fun stuff out. So get ready for that, and if you listen to this podcast, you'll be the first to know. Uh, Aaron, again, thanks so much for coming on. This was really, really fun. You're welcome, guys. It was fun. (laughs) All right. So for the Animation Station Podcast, I'm Josh. I'm Aaron. Oh, I'm Aaron! I'm Aaron! (laughs) Bye, everybody! Bye! (laughs) Perfect. (laughs) (laughs) Pause, which was entertaining in itself. <laughs>